Hey guys, D Mike here for another episode of Pokemon Brilliant Diamond. We've got four out of six of our current possible team members. And I actually went back and did a little scavenging because I skipped some stuff. So right before Sand Gem Town, there is a small patch of grass with a employee of the Pokemart. And she will give you 10 free potion, which is great because I bought five for no reason. And south of Sand Gem Town on the beach, get yourselves an antidote that will cure your poisons. So you can pick your poisons and then you can cure your poisons. So we're headed through this cave on our way to Orberg Town. But first, we we're stopped by this hiker. He is going to give us which I feel is a great quality of life change for this game. The TM for Rock Smash, which previously used to be an HM. However, that their way of circumventing that, because HMs in this game aren't just moves, they, like other Pokemon games, are used to interact with the overworld. In this case, Rock Smash allows you to smash rocks crazy. You're able to do that now with an app from the Poketch, which I think is very nice. Let's go ahead and eventually find that. Great. So here it is. Our first of, I believe, seven. This game has quite a few. Hidden moves Rock Smash. So in the case of these lightly colored rocks here, Rock Smash will allow you to smash them. Crazy. But I actually do like the move Rock Smash in the case of our upcoming battles that we're going to be dealing with. And in this game, you don't just get one copy of the TM, which I think is really nice. You don't actually need any copies of the TM because that's not what I meant to do. You don't actually need any copies of the TM, I believe, to use the HM variety in the overworld, which I think is a really nice touch, but it also is an attack. So we're going to go ahead and teach it to Chimchar because I feel like having a fighting type move would be kind of nice. Chimchar's attack is pretty decent. So we'll go ahead and get rid of Taunt. I think Taunt's kind of a garbage move. As I get older and I play these Pokemon games, I'm not all just like pure offense, whatever. Like I'm actually trying to strategize a little bit. So there might potential, potentially be uses for that type of a move in the future. But right now, not so much. Having a fighting type move though will be quite useful in our upcoming trials and tribulations. But the Pokemon that we really need to focus on, who's actually going to be our breadwinner, for the majority of this episode, it's actually Bart. So having Bart around would be quite nice. Thankfully, Bart is a grass type, so he's not going to be too affected by electricity. The other way around, though, we're going to find out if you can use Sun Spore on an electric type. It does not affect it. Okay, so you can't. Lesson learned. It's probably something I would have figured out in Pokemon from like, I don't know, five or six years ago. But, you know, you live and you learn. Let's go ahead and speed this up. I'm not entirely sure if you get more HP, no, if you get more experience, sorry, sorry, from having your top Pokemon participate in the battle first. I know that everybody gets the experience all, I'm aware of that, but I don't know if the first Pokemon being present is the one that gets the larger share of the cornucopia of experiences, and if that's the case, then we will do a little bit of the drop and swap method from Pokemon of yore. We're gonna need Bart to catch up a little bit. Bart is the newest member of the team, as you saw, we caught him. Yeah, and it looks to be the case. Unless potentially what is happening, and I'm just a dum dum, is the reason why Bart is getting more experience, it is because Bart is the weakest. So potentially the the experience scales based on your level and potentially based on the rate at which Pokemon acquire experience. Like I was mentioning, some Pokemon get experience at a faster rate than others. So, that could potentially be the case. So it looks like Picnic or Diana 
wants a mirror match, she will not get one because this would take forever and I do not have any patience for that. So instead, we're going to give Sharon an opportunity to shine. There's not going to be a ton of Sharon in this episode, so we might as well. I already have a good idea in my head of what is going to happen. So I'm just trying to prepare myself for the inevitable. In this game, like some of the other Pokemon games, I am well aware of what is going to be happening in the first gym. And similarly to Pokemon Red, Blue, Yellow, you are actually at a high disadvantage if you choose Chimchar first. Now, I didn't choose Chimchar because I wanted some crazy challenge or anything like that. I just always am a fire boy. So, you know, I will take the... I will take the difficulties, the challenges that are along the way. Nothing that we can't handle here at D-Mike Industries. But it's becoming abundantly clear in this game because this did not exist in Diamond and Pearl, just the originals. The experience all, while it is a nice quality of life addition to this game, with what you have to do, I feel like it kind of cheeses it, unfortunately. Playing this far into the game, you might have one Pokemon, and this is, I'm, you know, mind you, I'm saying this is what you'd have without doing a lot of grinding and twerking, you would have one Pokemon, maybe two tops, that would have hit level 10 by Orberg City. So, oh my gosh, I didn't really put that in there. We're gonna be a total noob. We have to keep working at it to be elite Hackzor. And thankfully this small child, who appears to be younger than us, is going to show us to where this gym is. That was a hundred very difficult steps, but thankfully their guidance made it all the easier. So let's talk to Barry here. I'm still not entirely sure looking at Barry's hair, how it got that way. Kind of looks like bedhead, which would make sense. But it appears the gym leader has left his station and Barry beat it. Oh, good for him. So we'll have to find where this gym leader is, play some catch up. But like I was saying, I'm not entirely sure, unless you did a lot of grinding in the game to raise your Pokemon with wild battles, which I will not be doing, if that's something where, from just trainer experience alone, if you would be able to have hit level 10 with maybe more than one or two Pokemon. That's kind of my guess. I could be wrong, but, you know, the experience all obviously, like, you're getting a lot more experience because everybody is getting it. So it does change things a little bit. So heading north, I don't think that there's any trainer battles, but there might be an item in the corner. Let's check it out. There is, my memory serves me right in a wild battle, but we will not fight. Once again, not going to be catching any Pokemon that aren't Sinnoh related, Sinnoh OGs. And my entire reasoning for that is just because I think it's more fun to show off the Pokemon that came from this generation specifically. And, you know, other Pokemon have had their chance to shine. And hopefully I don't run into too many encounters in this grass. I've already seen a Geodude. Geodude's not being much of a bro here, trying to bother me on my adventure. Sometimes when you walk into patches of grass like this one, and there's an empty, sp oh my gosh, are you kidding me? I w that wasn't even a full step. You saw that. I, I'm trying my hardest not to like do do any sort of like real tricky editing. I want you guys to get the full raw experience, but anyway, like I was trying to say, when you walk into grass and there's an empty patch, sometimes you will get lucky and there will be an item there. Usually it's a hidden item, but if you're careful, you can check that out. So here's the Orberg Mining Museum. Let's go ahead and check that out while we distract ourselves from our main mission here. I don't know if you have to pay for this. We do not. Great. I would not want to 
Help fund educational standards. Lame. So this guy is hinting at the fact that he is on the verge of a breakthrough about fossils, which I think is pretty cool. I actually do encourage... Oop, I'm reading this out of order. That's just talking about how coal is made. Don't care. Um, you'll be able to potentially at a later part of the game learn about fossils and fossil Pokemon. It's a big old piece of coal. Great. What an exciting thing to have in your city. Kind of reminds me of the office with the and I, I do believe there actually is a place in Scranton, Pennsylvania, where there is a, uh, a mineral museum, an anthracite museum, which I think is interesting, but not interesting for, like, it itself is not interesting. But the fact that they made a museum out of that is, uh, is something. So coming into this apartment complex, we will talk to everybody to make sure we don't miss on any items. In this case, we get a great ball. That's fantastic. I love when people share their balls with us. It's very kind. That's a good thing about doing this in this game. Is uh, sharing, sharing your balls and making sure that you talk to everybody. You always get all the items. Now that guy was saying something interesting that the mine is automated. It's no back breaking work. I wonder if he's part of the union. Wouldn't want to, you know, potentially use children in a mine. But we are still reliant on fossil fuels here in the world of Sinnoh. And they're using Pokemon too, so like, I don't know how automated it is. Like, obviously you can see that there's a conveyor belt and they're doing stuff like that, but, you know. There's a whole lot of NPCs here that are telling us a whole lot of nothing. That's great. People here are very proud of their coal mine, which I guess, you know, to an extent, it makes sense. Geography is a big proponent of pride and how you determine where you're from and what things you're excited about. Slag heap. I know some people I might call a slag heap. Oh, got him. All right, so... Mark's going to head into the mine now. Beware of busy Pokemon. Yeah, so it's automated. The people aren't doing it, but the, the Pokemon are. So I'm not entirely sure if I would call that automated. There is still some manual labor existing here, in which case I, it seems like it's fighting Pokemon that have strength like a Machop or a Machoke. Oh wow, we may be challenged Pokemon battles. And why is there a child? I thought that was a th this is not the 1800s anymore. We have child labor laws, Pokemon. Don't invite your children into dangerous caves and situations. It's bad. Okay, so now that we're down in the mine, let's see if we can find that gym leader. We were told he was here. Okay, so this guy has enslaved these Machop to do his bidding. And he snuck his Pokemon to work. I don't I don't quite understand this, because it said like they use them for working. So are these not Orberg Mine provided Machops? Or is that like a contraband thing? You're not supposed to bring your Machop to work day? Maybe Machops love working. Okay, great. So I'm trying to focus heavily on Bart here to see if I can get him another level or two before. You take on the Orberg Gym. Great. One of my favorite things about Pokemon actually is routinely missing attacks that shouldn't. That's awesome. I'm gonna try Stun Spore a third time. Shoot our goo all over this Machop. Very nice. When I played before as a kid, I never would focus on trying to do the debuffs or anything like that. I never would. Also, I don't remember what Worry Seed does. Sir... No, that's a horrible move and pointless. Anyway, so when I would play this game as a child, it was all just all attack all the time. And the moves that I had were routinely the type of the Pokemon. So there was no move variety. I didn't try to spread it around. Now, back then, back in my day, 
it was easier to kind of plan what moves you wanted to use. We're talking like Gen 3 and below because the... Well, that wasn't very nice. Because the moves themselves were type dependent. There was no special physical split. So it was a lot easier to kind of plan your team and plan what you wanted to do. It wasn't as much difficulty in, in making that happen. But now you have to think about it a little bit. You gotta strategize. I mean, not really. Maybe in like the original version of Diamond and Pearl, you may have wanted to do that. But now the game itself probably for the current audience is made a little bit more user friendly and in the process I would say easier you know I'm four episodes into this game so far but doesn't quite have that punch that Dark Souls edge that the original Diamond and Pearl had Ooh, those games were brutal my goodness can't get more than 10 feet without getting knocked out not kidding all Pokemon games for the most part are relatively easy so I'm not super worried about it. I am being a little hyperbolic, but in general. Also, what kind of haircut is that? It's like he, he has facial hair all the way down except for where his chin is. Who shaves everything but their chin? It's like the reverse goatee. Okay, so it appears there's an item down here. And I'm trying to walk because I still don't know if walking reduces your wild Pokemon encounter. All right, there's the... Gym leader, we're gonna see if we can walk past them. We can. There are still battles to be had. Just a quick battle on your break. I don't quite understand that either. Like, is Pokemon training a job? Is it, are you considered part of the Pokemon world workforce when you train Pokemon? I would assume that it is, because you can be a gym leader, which would make me assume that it's, it's employment. So, I'm assuming maybe this guy is just kind of treating Pokemon, training like a hobby, or he's using his work tools for Pokemon battling, which, if his boss found out about that, uh-oh. Now, all kinds of thoughts flood into my head when I play these games, and I usually just kind of speak extemporaneously, thanks journalism class, but... Um, Onyx, which was obviously a one-and-done, very easy Pokemon to take out in this case. Um, debatable, wor is it a rock snake, a rock worm, you know? Long, hard worm? I think it's a snake. And I remember having watched the original Pokemon, the cartoon as a child, and that game, when Ash is facing Brock, Onyx seemed so intimidating and scary, and whatnot and then you look at its stats in the game nerd and onyx is a nothing burger not as impressive as that rock smash so thankfully we were able to run into the gym leader who shows us their excellent skills their machismo by breaking that rock i don't think there's anything on the other side of this Maybe. There might be a hidden item in this spot. You should always kind of click around if you can and... Oh, I was almost able to get out of this entire place without running into any Pokemon. So thankfully it was a Geodude. I haven't seen one this episode, so that's very interesting. Okay. Would be a great place to train your Barts if that's what you're into. But we are not going to do that. Because... That would be a waste of our time, so we're going to try to GTFO without running into anything. Oh, just kidding. I spoke too soon. Here's another Pokemon I haven't seen in a while. This is Zubat. Zubat is the keys of the Pokemon world, as you can tell. Never really had any hard feelings for Zubat. I know that Brock had one in the original Pokemon series, and I was kind of indifferent to it. But in Gold and Silver, they introduced Crobat, which is great. Although Crobat in that game kind of sucks because the options for moves aren't very good, but that's neither here nor there. I mean, it is there, but it's neither here. So we were able to free the gym leader from the clutches of the mine, the mines of Moria, and we will heal up one last time before we go after the gym. Now what's nice is like all gyms, you'll have the chance to 
fight some pre-gym trainers. Although I shouldn't say all gyms because some of them don't have, have gym, lead gym leaders with trainers. But this one does. I want to say it's got a couple. So that should give another opportunity to train Bard up a little bit more. And make him a little more formidable. Formidable. Before we face the gym leader. Okay, let's go ahead and see what this guy has to say. Building us up already, I like that. Oh, he just says it to everybody, okay. So, it's the socialism approach to, to hype, I like that. Everybody gets a little piece of the pie. So, rock type gym leader, weak to water and grass. And that's a little knock on us for choosing Chimchar, basically trying to flex on us now. You don't have to fight any of these trainers at all. As you can see, there's little pathways and staircases you can take to head right to the gym leader. Perhaps you're doing a speed run and that would make it easier on you. So that might not be a poor choice to avoid trainers if you're trying to skidoo, but we're not. We're taking a nice leisurely jaunt through the world of Sinnoh and Bart being a grass type is actually a wonderful choice. I'm not going to be doing... I'm going to try not to cheese this upcoming gym battle because I actually do have a bit of a strategy in mind. Because I know it's coming and... I don't have one Pokemon that I just want to blast through this entire game with. That wouldn't be very fun. I used to do that. I used to just pick one Pokemon early in the game. Either maybe as a starter or you know, something else that was effective for what I was trying to do. And, uh, you know, I'd whoop, my way all the way through the gym leader, train, trainer, gym leader, trainers, gym leader. Oh, is this a fighting type move? I don't know if I've ever heard of power up punch. Oh, it is great. Um, oh, that's way better than rock smash. Oops. Um, well, that's unfortunate. I guess I don't really need two fighting moves, but Scratch is kind of pointless, and we'll just go ahead and do this for now. I did not know that was going to happen. I don't look up anything when I play these games. It's all trial and error and memory, so hopefully you guys don't get too put off by my winging it. And that's just the way I like to be. And already, I'm starting to notice that this game, while it is nice, there are, there are nice things about it, and I think they've done a good job upgrading it. There are still some things that hopefully they can fix this in the future. There are some moments here that I can tell are a little rough around the edges. Things don't quite seem like they had enough time to really polish the entire game. Not that it's bad, but, you know, when you're paying AAA money, you'd expect to probably have a little bit more to look at, I guess you could say. But we're doing pretty well so far. And you know what? Because we're not going to really have much of a use for anybody besides Bart in this gym battle, given the nature of our super effectiveness, in certain cases, double effectiveness, because Onyx and Geodude are ground and rock, so we're four times effective. Let's go ahead and see what Power Up Punch does. I don't know if that was a move that Chimchar could learn in the original Diamond and Pearl. I'm going to say it wasn't. And as Pokemon games change and grow, there is the potential for new generations moves to be retroactively applied to old generations. For example, playing in the in Fire Red and Leaf Green, the remakes of Pokemon Fire Red and Pokemon, or sorry, Pokemon Red and Pokemon Blue or Green. Oh, what move was that? Okay, anyway. If you chose Charmander, you would be in the same position as people who had chosen Charmander previously. That fire type moves were not going to be effective against Brock, who was also a rock gym leader. So you would be in a bit of a pickle. But they gave it Metal Claw, which was not an original move that Charmander can learn. So new generations change the moveset of old generations, which I think is kind of interesting. So we've got 
Steven here trying to learn bite. We're gonna go ahead and displace tackle. A little redundant. Both physical moves and bite's a little better. So we'll go ahead and do that. A lot of this is just deciding on the fly. So if I pick a move and you're like, no, 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 how could you do that? Well, you just gotta live with it. So we're actually gonna swap out. I don't wanna use Bart right away. So we can actually start with Charlie just because it'll give us something to do. And we'll use one of those oodles of potions we were given, because I don't really use the early game items very often. That's not a flex, I just forget, so. Here we are introduced to Rurk, Ro, Ro, Rurk. wants to see how tough we are because you're only tough if you do manual labor all right everybody let's do this gym battle d mike versus roark and his magenta fuchsia razzle dazzle pink hair here we go immediately in this battle you're gonna be experiencing the gimmick that they have set before us the incredibly fun and not obnoxious gimmick here it is. Thankfully, Charlie is pretty fast, but that's not going to matter because of what? Oh, never mind. Okay, well, usually, usually, in this battle, Geodude will be known to use a different type of attack, but it did not, so it's kind of convenient, actually. We can stack two levels of attack, which, you know, for all intents and purposes, doesn't really matter, but okay, well, it's you know, maybe we can knock it out before it does it at all. It'd actually be really, really beneficial. So, if it doesn't do it, I'll just, I'll just say it by the end of this fight with this Geo dude. I'm assuming it'll probably use it on its, on this turn, on turn three. So we'll see what we get. Here it is. Great. Okay. So this is the gimmick of this battle. Geo dude is going to set up as the first Pokemon for Roark, and it's going to use Stealth Rock. So Stealth Rock is a battle altering move that when in use it will reduce the HP of any Pokemon you switch into. Some of them will lose more, some of them will lose less. I think it determined, it's determined based on the, the type of the Pokemon that is being switched into. So for instance if it's a Pokemon that's weak to rock type moves then in that case it would be hindered more by the stealth rock. So it's really annoying and it can be pretty detrimental if you're not planning for that. If you are a person who likes to switch your Pokemon in and out a lot, then it can be pretty tricky. And you might be dealing with some uh, some danger. So be mindful of when you switch your Pokemon in and out. This Geodude is... I feel bad because I'm just spamming Power Up Punch, but it's a new move. It's a, it's a shiny new toy, and this Geodude is a pain in the buns. So thankfully, though, we get two turns in a row because it used an item. It's basically just trying to stall against us, which is okay. But having Charlie at full power ought to be pretty nice for the power up pinch. We use Charlie a little bit against Onyx, the next Pokemon. Spoilers! His team, Roark, has not changed actually between this game and the last, so. It is Geodude followed by Onyx, and then I won't spoil the the ace Pokemon. I won't spoil that one. So one of the things you're going to want to be mindful of when you play this game is uh, you're not going to want your Pokemon to faint. Now why is that? Now that seems kind of like a common sense thing to say. In this game in particular, your Pokemon fainting is doubly bad. When you play, you get the experience all, right? And the experience all is a great tool. However, the downside to the experience all is your Pokemon don't get any of it if they faint. So you just have to be mindful of that. Hopefully this stun spore works great. I'm actually going to use this as an opportunity to set up a bit and make Bart a formidable foe undefeated. We'll see how it goes. We have 15 potions. I'm not going to try to like potion stall this onyx or anything, but you'll see what I'm going to do in a moment. 
So this Onyx loves to use Rock Throw, which is very annoying, but thankfully, unless it hits a critical, it's not going to take us out. But we did acquire an X Defense. I never use these items in battle because I think that they're stupid and a waste of time. But in this case, I have it, and we'll play around with it a little bit. That raised our defense quite a bit, which is very nice, and we can go back and use that stockpile of potions that we have. And we do have Onyx on the ropes with the Paralysis. So thankfully, it triggers here, and we can start to set up. So Growth is a very good buff to, to Bart. It will raise your attack and your special attack, which we're going to want to do, because the Pokemon that we're going to be facing after Onyx is a bit of a butt, and we're going to want to be as strong as possible. We're not going to want to go into that final fight without having the maximum ability to do damage. We're not even going to really have the opportunity to try and stall it. We have to just go right into attacking, which you'll see in a little bit. Thankfully, Onyx is paralyzed, and it's just wasting away its turns. I believe this is four turns of growth, so we're actually going to do the full six this time, just to make sure that things go exactly as I need them to. And it's going to do a little bit of damage to us, that's okay. We shouldn't actually be hindered too much by the rock throws, because we do still have the ability to use a final absorb that we will have to do to knock it out. So I think one more growth should do it, and that should almost put us at full health, as long as the onyx doesn't do one more rock throw. So hopefully it gets paralyzed or it can't attack or anything like that. That would be great. Perfect. So this is an excellent setup. So now we have six levels of growth and one final absorb. Should be enough to get us back to full health. Hopefully. We'll see if it works. Is my math right? No, close. Close. That's okay. But thankfully, the final Pokemon for Roark is going to be another gra or sorry, another grass type, another rock type, and we do get a level up for Bart. So Bart's attack is going to go up a little bit more, or special attack in this case, which is great, because that's what we want, and no, we will keep our current Pokemon. So we've used the X defense, we've got six layers of growth to face the only Sinnoh Pokemon in Roark's team, which has the cool rock seal on the ball, which I think is nice, and we're just going to start spamming Absorb right away. So hopefully the X defense comes through for us. It does. It's actually very good to use that. And we can get a one-shot on Kranidos. Done, done, wham, bam. Thank you, Bart. Very good. So that was a little bit of strategy. That fight's actually kind of tough if you don't have Turtwig or Piplup. But we defeated Gym Leader Roark. He's very surprised and very sassily disappointed. Speaking of buffed up Pokemon, what do you think of our Pokemon? Our Pokemon were pretty buffed. This is embarrassing. You're right, kicks trash can. I mean, all the Pokemon trainers that he faced technically don't have gym badges, right? Can you do them out of order? Like in the in the real Pokemon world? I don't know. I don't quite understand how the Pokemon League works and like the reality of this, but in this game, which is really cool, is you get a nice little gym kit for your badges. And hopefully it'll let me do what I think it'll do. But getting the cold badge unlocks Rock Smash. And we get TM76s. That is Stealth Rock. So we can pester other people now if we want to. We won't, because we're not a jerk. And we get stickers. So those are the ball seals that you saw. You can put some stickers on our balls and have a great time. So that's a lot of fun. So we did it, everybody. Congratulations to us. I would like to face the other direction. Let's stand next to you to show that we beat you and assert dominance. Great. Okay, so that was wonderful. Thanks for watching, everybody. This has been Pokemon Brilliant Diamond. I've been D-Mike, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.